Welcome to the Building Vocabulary Mini Lecture. Let us begin this mini lecture with an anticipation guide. Pause the video clip and for each statement put a check on the lecture note under agree or disagree to show how you feel. Capable students vocabulary grow at an astonishing rate, about 3,000 to 4,000 words a year or roughly 8 to 10 new words every day. Estimates of the number of words known by average first graders vary widely from 2,500 to 24,000. However, 5,000 to 6,000 seems a reasonable figure. Yet, by the time they graduate from high school, students' vocabularies on average reach 25,000 to 50,000 words or more. To be proficient readers and writers, students must build their vocabularies and learn strategies for coping with difficult words. As students progress through their grades, a key element in their growth as readers and writers is vocabulary development. If a student's vocabulary development is not encouraged and supported, the reading gap will become greater as the student progresses through school. As stated earlier, students learn about 3,000 words per year. Most of these words are learned outside of school from parents, other adults, television, radio, and peers. Studies have shown that the vocabulary gap at second grade is about 3,900 words. By 7th grade, the vocabulary gap is 20,000 words, and it keeps getting bigger. Vocabulary size predicts comprehension, but learning new words is especially hard for students who come to school with small vocabulary or limited knowledge of English. Vocabulary instruction is important. While most of the words students learn are outside of school, you can encourage parents to use varied vocabulary around their students and advocate for your students by encouraging community leaders to use varied vocabulary as well. The goal of vocabulary instruction is for students to learn new words and the meanings of unknown words, to manipulate them playfully, and to appreciate their power. A student's oral vocabulary knowledge is related to decoding written words because a student's oral vocabulary knowledge allows him or her to derive meanings as he or she decodes written words. Knowing a word's meaning is not an either-or proposition. There are six tasks that lead to word knowledge. Learning to read known words. Learning new meanings for known words. Learning new words that represent known concepts. Learning new words that represent new concepts clarifying and enriching the meaning of known words, and moving words from receptive to expressive vocabulary. Researchers have created a way to help teachers identify vocabulary and choosing which words to study. They have divided vocabulary words into three tiers or levels. Tier 1 are your basic words, common words used socially. Examples are tired, car, outside, spill, water. Tier 2 are your academic words, words with wide application in school context and used more frequently in written than in oral language. Examples are sentence, author, vowel, question mark, revise, character, genre. Tier 3 are specialized terms. They are content-specific technical terms that are often abstract. Examples are fraction, explorer, chrysalis, healthy, amphibian, and equator. What about teaching vocabulary for English language learners? With Tier 1, use pictures, objects, pantomime, and demonstration. With Tier 2, point out cognates, pre-teach unfamiliar words, and use explicit instruction. For Tier 3, translate the words if possible, briefly explain, use word posters, word sorts, and semantic feature analysis. Students develop knowledge of a word gradually through oral and written exposures to it. There are four levels of word knowledge. It begins with the unknown word. This is a word that the student does not recognize. Then there is initial recognition where the student has seen or heard the word or can pronounce it but does not know the meaning. Then there is partial word knowledge. This is when the student knows one meaning of the word and can use it in a sentence. Full word knowledge comes last. This is where the student knows more than one meaning of a word and can use it in several ways. Students do not reach the fourth level with every word they learn. But once students reach the third level, they can usually understand the word in context and use it in writing. Researchers concur that to own a new word for the long term, students must see and use the word multiple times in several contexts. Vocabulary has a developmental continuum. In preschool, students know about 3,500 words and they know colors and animal names. 
In kindergarten, students' vocabulary increases and they know approximately 5,000 words. They are able to name opposites of words like good, day, and little. In first grade, students learn the academic language such as sentence, question mark, consonant, etc. needed to be successful in school. Also, they know about 8,000 words. In second grade, students know about 10,000 words. They expand their knowledge of base words and words related to those base words. They learn more about antonyms and synonyms. In third grade, students have a vocabulary of around 13,000 words and start developing word consciousness discussed next. They are now noticing multiple meanings of words and figurative language. In fourth grade, where learning to read switches to reading to learn, the vocabulary gap between on-level and struggling students widens and becomes more obvious as vocabulary demands increase. Another part of vocabulary instruction is developing students' word consciousness. Word consciousness is essential for vocabulary growth and comprehending the language of schooling. Students who have word consciousness exemplify these characteristics. Students use words skillfully, understanding the nuances of word meanings. Students gain a deep appreciation of words and value them. Students are aware of differences between social and academic language. Students understand the power of word choice. Finally, students are motivated to learn the meaning of unfamiliar words. It is important for teachers and other adults to help students develop their vocabulary. In the preschool years, children who are read to have a larger vocabulary than those who are not read to. Better readers do more reading, both inside and outside of school. The concept that good readers learn more vocabulary because they read more is an example of the Matthew effect, which states that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. So what are some vocabulary concepts that teachers can teach their students? There are five vocabulary concepts. Let us start with synonyms. Synonyms are words that have nearly the same meaning as the word being studied. Examples for big are large, huge, enormous, gigantic. When I was a graduate assistant, there was another graduate assistant in the department from Greece. English was a second language to her. Many times she would come to me asking what a word meant. I helped her out as best as I could, and she always said I was a walking dictionary. But the answers I was giving her were not definitions. I was giving her several synonyms for the words she didn't know. I was more a walking thesaurus. Synonyms can help define a word. However, there are many shades of meaning. I could argue that something gigantic is bigger than something large. Antonyms are the opposite meaning to the word being studied. Antonym examples of big are small, tiny, little, etc. Antonyms also have shades of meaning. Students can use a thesaurus to locate synonyms and antonyms. Words that sound alike or are spelled alike are generally known as homonyms. However, there are really three types of homonyms. Homophones are the most common type. These words sound alike but are spelled differently. Examples include eight and eight, two, two, and two. Homographs are words spelled alike but pronounced differently. Examples include present, present, present the present to the girl, and read, read the book, I read it yesterday. Homographic homophones are words that are spelled alike and pronounced alike. For example, fly can be an insect, a fly is a pesky insect, or an action verb, most birds can fly. Many words have more than one meaning. The word hot usually means high temperature or heat, but it can also mean angry, a bold color, current, eager, fast, popular, good-looking, and stolen. Finally, vocabulary concepts include figurative meanings, which are usually metaphorical in nature. Idioms are groups of words that must be interpreted figuratively. Examples include in the doghouse and raining cats and dogs. Comparisons include similes and metaphors. A simile is a comparison signaled by the use of like or as. For example, the dead tree looked like a skeleton in the moonlight. A metaphor is a comparison of two things by implying that one is the other without using like or as. For example, the dead tree was a skeleton in the moonlight. Here are some read aloud books for building vocabulary. They are listed by a suggested grade level, but they can be used in any grade to go with a thematic unit. In preschool, Chicka Chicka Boom Boom and any of the Skippy John Jones books are excellent read-alouds. Kindergarten has Diary of a Spider and Fancy Nancy. First grade read-aloud includes Officer Buckle and Gloria, 
Second grade can use click clack moo cows the type. Third grade read alouds include cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Fourth grade can use pink and say, which is a picture book set in the Civil War, or Charlotte's Web, which is a chapter book. Several of these books are pictured along the side of the screen. In one read aloud research study, researchers exposed kindergarten and first grade students to read aloud trade books chosen because they included sophisticated words that struggling readers would be unlikely to learn on their own. The students had opportunities to discuss the books, hear the words explained in the context of the story, and hear the words used over the next few days. They learned more words than students in the comparison group who participated in traditional read-alouds. For building vocabulary, students can read any of the books listed here to build their vocabulary. Print off the lecture notes that accompany this mini-lecture for the list. These books are excellent books for dealing with figurative language. Figurative language and words with multiple meanings pose special problems for ELLs, who tend to focus on literal meanings of words. Check out the ESL idiom page at the website listed at the bottom of the screen for a colorful and accurate rendering of some of the most common idioms in the English language. Phrases such as hit the hay and easy as pie are illustrated in sentences that are fairly obvious and helpful in determining meanings for these non-literal expressions. Students learn many words from context as they read. The surrounding words and sentences offer clues as to the unknown word's meaning. The best way to teach students about context clues is by modeling. Context clues can be divided into six types. Definition is when readers use the definition in the sentence to understand the unknown word. Example illustration is when readers use an example or illustration to understand the unknown word. Contrast is when readers understand the unknown word because it's compared or contrasted with another word in the sentence. Logic is when readers think about the rest of the sentence to understand the unknown word. Root word and affixes is when readers use their knowledge of root words and affixes to figure out the unknown word. Grammar is when readers use the word's function in the sentence or its parts of speech to figure out the unknown word. Take a minute and think back to how you had vocabulary instruction in elementary school or any grade that you can remember. What did your instruction look like? What is one word or short phrase that you could use to describe your vocabulary instruction? Here is an example of a dictionary assignment, something many of you may have experienced in school. On a recent assignment, Ellie wrote the following. Do you think Ellie found this assignment meaningful or motivational? Has she demonstrated any understanding of the word? Well, vocabulary instruction does not have to be boring, dull, or routine. There are hundreds of ways to teach vocabulary in fun, entertaining, and game-like ways that sparkle. To name a few activities, you can use word walls, word posters, word maps, dramatizing words, word sorts, word chains, semantic feature analysis, magic squares, and hink pinks. No one strategy can do the job alone because different kinds of words require different approaches. Not to mention that students' needs vary with age, background knowledge, native language, and motivation. Many of the strategies shown here will be discussed in the vocabulary activity section of this mini lecture. A good resource for vocabulary instruction is pictured here. Now that we understand what vocabulary is, let us move on to some of the fun and exciting ways of teaching vocabulary that moves beyond copying the word and definition from a dictionary. Best practice in vocabulary instruction is not looking up a word in the dictionary or in the glossary of a textbook, writing the definition, and then writing the word in a sentence. There are much better ways that are more motivational for students. Skill and drill worksheets and workbooks are not effective vocabulary building activities. Effective activities include, but are not limited to, commercial games such as Password and Balderdash, feature-made games which you can search on the internet and include memory, crossword puzzles, and Wordo. Take time to search the internet at your leisure to learn more about these activities. Phonograms are fun ways that help students build vocabulary. In the older grades, students can even create these themselves. There are three types of phonograms, Hink Pinks, Hinky Pinkies and Hinkity Pinkities. Phonograms are pairs of rhyming words that are answers to riddles. Hink Pinks are rhyming words that have 
only one syllable. Here are two examples of Hank Pink's. First, a dream or request made by a water animal. You need to think of two rhyming words that only have one syllable each that answers this riddle. Do you have it? The answer is fish wish. How about the second example? An animal that is in the air so it does not get wet. Answer, dry fly. Can you think of any yourself? Hinky pinkies are phonograms where the rhyming pair are both two syllables. For example, a violent tale is a gory story. Hinky pinkies are answers where the rhyming words have three syllables each. For example, stealing by thieves who think they are better than other people are robbery snobbery. Analogies foster critical thinking and reinforcement of key vocabulary through the comparison of relationships in two pairs of words. Analogies can be part to whole, cause and effect, person to situation, antonym, synonym, geography, person or character to task, country, birthplace, time or measurement, symbol, characteristic or trait, or degree. An example of a part of whole analogy is A is to alphabet as toe is to blank. The answer is foot. Other fun activities are word play activities. These activities play with words from tongue twisters to slips of the tongue where students say something like wave the snails instead of save the whales. Search the internet for some fun activities on the list of types of word play. Examples or definition are provided on the slide. Many teachers like to have a mystery word of the day. Here teachers give one clue until a student guesses the correct answer. What is the mystery word for these clues? Answer, vocabulary. Another activity is making connections chart. Here the student puts the vocabulary word in the first column along with a page number where the word can be found. In the second column, the student thinks about the reading connections to other passages. In the third column, students write about their thinking about personal connections. Finally, in the last column, students think about wordly connections to the vocabulary word. A word map is a graphic organizer that examines a word being studied. There are various word map formats. In the word map pictured, the word being studied and its definition is in the middle. Above the word is the phonics information about the word, morphemic analysis, root word, and suffix. Below the word is history of the word, related words, and the word used figuratively. Word walls are posted in classrooms and can be as simple as just words to as complex as the word, a picture of the word, and the definition of the word. The pictured word wall has the word in color, the definition of the word in black, and many of them have pictures or clip art to help students remember the word and its meaning. Take some time and search for articles or internet sites on the listed other vocabulary activities shown here. Both informal assessments and standardized tests can be used to measure students' vocabulary knowledge but tests often equate word knowledge with recognizing or being able to state a single definition of a word rather than assessing the depth of students' knowledge. Here are some norm reference vocabulary tests. The Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test-4, the Expressive Vocabulary Test-2, and Informal Reading Inventories. Even though these tests aren't very useful in whole classroom settings, they can aid in diagnosing struggling readers and English learners with limited word knowledge.